Today I'm going to be looking at and talking about how I went from painting plain air landscapes that looked like this. These were actual efforts. I mean, it's all for fun for me. I'm a beginning watercolorist just trying to figure out this whole art world. And when I say beginner, I mean real beginner. Like I didn't come from acrylic painting or from sketching before and then tried watercolor. Watercolor was the first like art medium I tried since I was like in lower elementary school. So how I went from landscapes that look like this to one month later painting a plein air landscape that looked like this. Do I think that this is the most amazing landscape that I've ever seen painted? Of course not. But I wanted to make this video because I was amazed with being a beginner just how much pro progress I was able to make in just one month's time and actually in that time I only painted 11 landscapes. I painted about 17 um, other things during that time but I only painted 11 landscapes and I went from here to here and I just want to talk about that in this video. So if that sounds like something interesting to you, stick around. Um, if you do enjoy this video, consider subscribing. So the first thing I want to talk about before I, I jump into sort of the two big things that I did and talking through those, I just want to show, just talk about my history with art a little bit. Because it was a few years ago now, I guess, I found this watercolor set at a store. It cost $5.99 for two brushes and a set of 12 paints. So these are not the best quality paints. But I'd always wanted to try painting and I thought watercolor was beautiful. So I thought I would give it a go. And give it a go I did. And I had some fun doing it. And these are going to be really embarrassing. So <laughs> please, please don't judge me. I'm working to get better, but I just want to show where I started. So this is like one of the first pictures I tried painting with that kit. Like I said, I don't have any art experience in another medium. So um, this was a tutorial that I worked through online. I forget which one it was. Um, this was another tutorial on YouTube that I tried for landscapes and I painted mostly sort of flowers in between here but I just wanted to show some of the landscapes and this was one of the last things that I painted so I didn't feel like I was having a lot of success I didn't see myself really growing <laughs> with watercolor or getting that much better so I sort of decided that because I didn't have the art background it maybe just wasn't for me just making images from um, like a blank piece of paper. I got into like stamping with ink that um, is insoluble so you can put water over top of it. So I was um, doing watercolor over stamps. I was doing some watercoloring in like coloring book pages. I was making the odd card, but really I sort of stopped doing art for a number of years because although this was great fun and I actually did buy this one during that time as well so I used was using both of these um, that was one thing that I thought maybe if I tried a different material I would be getting better results but I just I wasn't I wasn't happy with it and people would often say things like oh it's so easy and you just do this and 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 it wasn't being easy so I try to follow the joy if it wasn't fun wasn't doing it anymore, moved on to other sort of creative outlets that didn't involve any kind of me creating the image, more coloring the image. So fast forward to a few years later, about three months, two, three months ago now, I decided, you know what, I'm, I'm going to paint again. I needed to break out the paints for a project and it made me want to try it again. And I have to say I've had a lot more success this time. How did I go from these to this in one month? The month prior to this I had been painting daily so before these I had been painting daily but on this trip that I was on which was to the mountains here I used this Koi watercolors pocket field sketch box and 
I've seen good reviews of this online. People love it. Um, I did enjoy it for a time. I maybe didn't love the art that I was creating with it, but I definitely had fun making it most of the time. And I just was finding that the colors were kind of dull and I it didn't feel like it was getting enough color payout. So one of the first things that I did when I decided I wanted to up my landscape game before, this was a trip to the ocean. So I went to the mountains and the ocean this year. I know, lucky duck, lucky duck. But I upgraded some materials, specifically my paint. So I created, I purchased and then created. So this was an empty palette with empty tins. It came with some tins and I bought some more as well as some magnets and I created my own curated palette. Some of the things that were different in this palette was one I went for and bought some of the the crazy expensive paint. I just sort of needed to know, you know, like does it really make that big of a difference? Um, and again, I'm a lucky duck. It is very expensive, but this was something that I was able to purchase. And for me, it made a huge difference. So the two things that made a big difference in, in my landscapes were the Schminke Super Granulation Forest set, these five colors, mostly greens and one blue, as well as Moon Glow by Daniel Smith. So I curated my own palette with colors that I loved that were super pigmented and I have an entire row of convenience greens because one thing that I found very frustrating in a lot of videos that I watched were people talking about how you just sort of need the primary colors that you can always mix your greens and I used green a lot and there was green in this set and in the koi, but they weren't nice greens that I liked. And trying to mix them was such a headache. And having just beautiful greens that I loved has made a huge difference. So that's one. One, I got different materials. I got materials that I love to work with that I think were beautiful colors that have much better color payoff. So that was one. The second thing that I did was a little bit of book learning. So I enjoy going to the library and taking books out of the library. One book that I took out from the public library, I was, I painted these four images with. So these were all from, it's called How to Paint Water and Water Watercolor by John Dowden. I probably took out and looked at at least sort of 20 watercolor books, I bet, from the library. And reading through, they would have some like tips and tricks and stuff, but often it was things much more intense than I needed. As someone who was coming from here, they were, the authors were often worried about things that I didn't even know what they were talking about. But in John Dowden's book, there was still some of that, for sure. <laughs> But he also started the book with five sort of mini projects with very step by step. Do this, try this color, do this thing, outlined very nicely. I still struggled my way through it as evidence of these. They're pretty, but things are definitely a little bit off. But I was actually able to complete an image and I was able to learn so much from each picture that I completed. So I think they were, I did, this is one, two, three, four was the order that they were completed in. So that was a huge help. Um, from this image, I learned about light and sort of how to fake light and what light looks like. Um, from this one, it was very much talking about shadow and the importance of shadow with water. Um, this was very good about sort of blank space as well as blending of colors and this talked more sort of about rocks. This made me very much think I need to work more on rocks but I was able to learn a lot from that. 
So I, I completed these four image, these four paintings during my month of work. But following instructions and creating an image is a lot more straightforward than plain air. Just being outside, not having someone say, do this layer, then do this layer, then do this layer, and you having to make all of your choices. So I was also painting plain air myself. So after having completed these, I went to a lake near us and I did a plain air painting. So already I'm seeing some growth, um, just like the little grasses here I was quite happy with. <laughs> um, the sky was much better than what um, had been in the previous places. There's still a lot of gro room for growth, obviously. There's still a lot of, of room for growth overall, but there'd definitely been a lot of improvement. So I was feeling better. I was feeling like I was on the right track. Then I got into, I couldn't really find a lot of other books that were super helpful. Um, that's not true. I did learn one thing. So from a book called Painting Water in Watercolor, 30 Techniques by Ron Hazel, he talked about a technique for making glitter water. So it was using a dry brushing technique to make this glitter water. So I did also learn that. But then I started to try some YouTube and looking for being a beginner, I need sort of very straightforward lessons. And I found those lessons in someone named Paul Clark and all of his videos. <laughs> One that I really enjoyed was about rocks. This is some notes that I made while watching his video. Blew my mind. Finally, someone said where to shade things <laughs> at the bottom. And suddenly I shaded these blobs at the bottom. I had rocks. It was a very exciting day. Um, here are some other rocks with different techniques that he suggested. I'll link his video below. He has lots of very beginner friendly. The way that he does it is very comedic. So I was feeling good. Feeling good enjoying things. So I just kept painting. I'm painting daily. So these are some other sort of landscape adjacent paintings that I created. So in total during the month, like I said, I did 11 landscapes. And just the amount of growth that I saw in that time sort of blew my mind. Like the materials, I think, were a, a, a huge help. Like this isn't a beautiful image, but like the, the vibrancy helps so much for the image and making it something that anyway I like looking at better and I wish I would have known how quickly you could improve <laughs> so after that I went on my trip were was every plein air painting that I did a masterpiece no it wasn't um, this is one of the first ones that I did this one's kind of cute this one uses ink though um, they weren't all amazing, but the day that I painted this, I was so proud. I, I set a goal, I'd worked towards it, and with just sort of an hour a day, in one month, I was able to make such, such growth. I'm not making this video to just talk about like, isn't this like, aren't I amazing kind of thing. I'm making this just to say, if you want to paint and you've never painted before, it is possible with consistent practice, finding the right tools, finding the right mentors, finding the right direction, finding some community. I've been active on Instagram and it's so wonderful talking to other people and seeing their growth alongside being able to show my growth on there you can start making paintings that you're you're proud of and not, not as embarrassed about. So I love the plain air painting. I love painting outside. I love painting from life. And with a few skills and a few lessons and a little bit of time, it made a huge difference. 
Was there anything that you've done that has made a huge difference in your painting skills? I do hear that once you get a little bit better, you don't see the growth as quickly as you do at the beginning. So I'm really trying to enjoy this time. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Hope you got something out of this. Hopefully maybe you'll try a little plein air painting or try a couple guided landscapes or guided something and then go out and do it. Thanks for being here.